coming into this segment. All the talk on the national news these days is mail-in voting. The Democrats want automatic mail-in voting. Um, let me just say that absentee voting is good for all the folks who are homebound, for military folks who are overseas. Absentee voting has been going on for years. There's still a little trickery in there. Um, but uh, I personally went to vote in the last election, and I was told that this polling place that I went to for the last 30 years is no longer my polling place because I moved. Now, mind you, I had not moved, okay? Um, but they assumed I moved, and they sent me this, uh, a transfer notice that went to another home, and then it got forwarded to me, okay? So if you want to know how crazy this stuff is, I didn't move. But the Board of Elections told me I moved. So now I got to take action to fix it, okay? And as it gets crazier and crazier, somebody who's right in the thick of it, talk about the rubber meets the road. It's my next guest, Dion Powell. He's joined us many times before. He's a Democratic candidate for New York State Assembly in the 79th District in Bronx. He's also the Executive Director of Government Affairs and Public Relations for political campaign training company Special Forces. Now, Dion, I know you were running in a race there, and there was a big primary. There, there wasn't a primary. There was a big, you know, a whole bunch of people thrown off the ballot for invalid signatures. Now, you make the ballot. You get in the race, and lo and behold, you got people who got thrown off the ballot, but the ballots were printed too soon, so they're on it. That's correct. And what happens with their votes? What happens here? They shouldn't even be taking votes away from you or anyone else in the first place, but what do you see happening? Well, I do see happening as well. I was told happening, seeing as though the candidate that they voted for was disqualified, all their votes are null and void. So you have thousands of votes that are, you know, thrown out the window in the garbage for people that think they could vote for legitimately. On top of that, ironically, all the people that were knocked off the ballot are people that would have won if these votes were counted. So that makes it more egregious and more disgusting, if you ask me. So what was the final, what was the final uh, margin of victory? How many votes? Well, according to the absentee ballot report that we got from watching the ballots, they won. Um, but however, we don't know that because the Board of Elections won't release the machine count that was taken at the polling sites. But from the absentee ballot counts reports that we have, they technically won the election. But if you go to the Board of Elections website, on the, the um, unofficial account, Felix's name is not there amongst other people. So, so you, we don't have any way of knowing. Here's the actual Board of Elections document. You know for a fact that someone was on that ballot um, who wound up not being in the race, and many, many people voted for him. Do we have a total votes cast number or anything? Because this is exactly what President Trump is talking about. Right. Um, the document that you guys are going to see eventually is this document here, which is the actual printout of the absentee ballot account. And you see Felix's name right here. So you guys are going to share that shortly, I believe. Yep, we and have that up there right count. now. Yes, that's the absentee ballot counts. And as you can see from the numbers, Felix actually won. And there's more like this currently. But the Board of Elections is not showing it on their website because they want the public to know this information. So the guy who got the most votes wasn't even actually in the race. Correct. According to because he got knocked off during a petition period. But people didn't know that at the time. And I spoke to an election lawyer, Republican now from Albany with the um, Republicans, the Lawyers Association and the New York State GOP. And he said there's no recourse for this. Because the Board of Elections has a statute of limitations to file any complaint or notice to show cause within the 15 to 30 day range. But as a citizen and as a candidate, you wouldn't find out this happened to you until after the fact when they were counting the ballots. So there's no way to take legal action. All right. So let me bre let me break something down now. Now, you need people to come join you tomorrow. OK, at the New York City Board of Elections at 32 Broadway, because you're going to yep. try to stop these commissioners from certifying these results, right? Because a lot of people were disenfranchised in this. Now, let me tell you, my friend, Stephen H. Richmond, the general counsel of the New York City Board of Elections, is the number one enemy of democracy on the face of the earth. The man right. is not in there 
to do right by the voters. He's in there to do right by, by the Democratic Party. The head of the Board of Elections in New York City just got sanctioned because he was getting these big extravagant trips from these companies they bought the voting machines from. So yeah. there's nothing but fraud and enemies of democracy there. But you think Steve Richmond's going to stand up tomorrow and certify these results? That is correct. The email I sent you guys about the meeting, nobody really knows about that. The reason why I knew that meeting was happening with the commissioners is by word of mouth, but to actually get the detailed information was from Richmond because I'm taking back, I'm being taken back to Bronx court as a candidate because there's a lot, we filed, they filed suit rather months ago and Richmond had to report to the court coach. It's called a coach, coach candidate coach, um, where and when the uh, meeting would take place because the court system itself couldn't find out from the Board of Elections when they were certified. So thank God I got this email as a candidate. Well, it's getting crazier by the minute, my friend. It seems, you know, there was an old saying on the Democrat side, why beat them at the ballot box when you can beat them at the Board of Elections? And they do all kinds of trickery in that Board of Elections. Um, usually they go out of their way to throw people off the ballot, people they think that are threatening to their favorite candidates. In this, in in this instance, they just mysteriously left a guy on the actual ballot um, and that guy just coincidentally gets, at, it, from what we could see in your tally, he had the most votes of all the candidates, but also the votes he did get that are being canceled, uh, they certainly could have affected the margin of income, margin of uh, victory and, and had a different winner. Is that right? That's correct. And this is, remember, this is just many out of uh, other 50, like 20 or so candidates that's happened to where they won but not for the ballot. But the shameful thing, however, John, is that a lot of these candidates actually are in AOC's district. And AOC, as you might know, she's not going to do anything about this. Because if we have to reset this election, restart the election, she might actually lose. So she's full progressive and so socialist and free information. She said nothing. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of these candidates are in her district that ran for office. Right. And I would imagine, I would imagine the ones she's backing have already won. So she's not going to come stand up for the people. No, oh, and that's very disgusting on her part, but that's another segment entirely about her. Oh, yeah, without question. But so tell me this. I know you've been in a one man war with the Board of Elections for a while, um, and you think there's something a lot worse brewing under the covers up there. Is this a predicate for what we can expect in the next election if we go to uh, mail in voting? Yes, um, I just like to add, John, like I always say, I'm also going to be in the November election. Under the conservative line, you know, sleep in peace, Mr. Dil Bill Newmark, uh, former Bronx chairman who passed from COVID. So I am concerned as a conservative candidate in November, what's going to happen with these mail-in ballots. For example, there's an article coming out in WNYC. Her name is Bridget Bergen. She reported that the post office didn't mail absentee ballots until June 20th. So many people didn't get the ballots until after June 23rd. All this information is coming out and nothing's being done. And the president and the Department of Justice is not taking seriously. But I'm making more efforts than many entities. I have a call after this to try to expose it to the Department of Justice to hopefully get a full investigation and or overturn. That way candidates like myself and the world can know what's going on here. So one of my viewers who's watching right now, we take a lot of interactive stuff. My, one of my viewers, Janet, just uh, sent in that her mother died four years ago. The new owners of her house said that a mail-in ballot was sent to them with the mother's name on it. She's been passed for four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's typical. You see, that's the mail-in ballot fraud. There's something called ballot harvesting that I let your um, colleagues know about, where candidates, as early as late April, could have got the absentee ballot application, going to a thousand doors, have it filled out and signed off by the voter, and then got physically their ballot from the Board of Elections. They could have opened it, voted for them, taken it back, and voted for them. And on top of that, if that person went to the polling site and voted in person, the Board of Elections is not letting you know if the vote after the ballot they cast matches up with the actual vote they did in person. Wow. In addition, like you said, a lot of deceased people, of course, candidates can get access to that data too, you know, van and so forth. Oh, man. So of course they get the forged signatures like they always do and vote for a lot of deceased people. Yep. Lastly, John, a lot of people who move out of the district who are no longer eligible to vote in the district, right. that data is available as well. So that's far right there alone from candidates taking information, voting signatures, like the petition period, and voted in thousands 
a mess. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, my man, we're here for you if you need us. And I would encourage you, if you're in the town, go down to uh, 32 Broadway tomorrow and meet up with Dion and the people and support the cause. We need real democracy, and we ain't getting it. Thank you, Dion. You the man. Thank you, John, as always. Quick break. Come back right after this and wrap it up on a Money Monday edition of Liquid Lunch.